Hey, uh, Mike Can. I wanted to uh, talk about the murder of Tupac Shakur. Uh, Tupac is in the news again this week. If you look, uh, Jimmy uh, Roseman, who's on who's uh, on trial for judge, drug charges, he uh, there's some news on him. I guess he uh, sources say that he, he had admitted to the prosecutors that he was involved behind the shooting in New York City, where Tupac was shot what five times and survived the first shooting. A lot of people don't know, don't remember or realize Tupac was shot two different times. The first time he survived in New York City. And uh, it's in the news again, so I think it's a good topical time to talk about Tupac. Um, I've always wondered, who, you know, what happened to him, like a lot of people. Like, what, who murdered him and why is it still unsolved? There's so many different su suspects out there. If you look at uh, YouTube and the Internet, a lot of different suspects, a lot of different theories. Uh, I just want to kind of go through some of them and, and start a discussion on it. Um, one of the biggest ones, obviously, is that the Crips did it. Just like the the, the Las Vegas fight video shows, uh, Orlando Anderson. If you uh, follow Anton Beatty on YouTube, you'll see that that is what he has concluded. Uh, Anton, he, he's definitely intelligent on the subject. He definitely done a lot of research. Uh, I respect him on it. But sometimes I question him because he's such a zealot on this uh, on this uh, theory. He thinks that there's no question Tupac was shot by the Crips and it was because of beef. Um, that's that's one theory. Another theory is the John Potash theory that uh, the FBI did it. The FBI, the uh, war against Tupac. Um, I'd say the same thing about him as 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 Anton. Actually, I just. Uh, you know, both of these guys, actually, I, I'm glad I follow them and check them out because they both bring up a lot of good information. But I think sometimes they're they're putting the information and um, in, in, in putting it in the light that they want to see it in. You know, they're only looking at the information that, that shines positive light on their pet theories. And uh, I, I just, I don't think either one of these guys has proven either theory yet. Um, there's also some other theories that are very interesting and strange. Um, some people think that Quincy Jones actually might have had something to do with it. Um, if you look at some of the things that Tupac might have said, I, I, you know, I'm not even sure if Tupac actually said these things about Quincy Jones, but uh, very interesting. You know, they they paint the picture that uh, Quincy Jones is uh, a gay man and hit on Tupac, and Tupac didn't like it and uh, talked about it, and that was uh, a revenge factor. Um, you know, you never know. You never know on that one. Um, another one that you always see is the Illuminati, the New World Order. I don't know if I'm quite buying that one either. Um, it's interesting, you never know. I mean, I, I kind of, you know, want to look at the the, the the folks that had the most to benefit taking down Tupac. And I, I just don't see that uh, there's any Illuminati out there that would really benefit by taking out Tupac Shakur. I just, I know that he was a leader. I know that uh, a lot of people followed him, and he could have been very influential. And that's why, really, Tupac does interest me. But I just don't really buy that theory. Um, the theory that I never see, that, I, that I've always had an interest in, is the record companies themselves. Um, if you look back at Tupac Shakur, he was uh, first signed to a record label under Jimmy Ivone. Um, people, you know, I don't think people realize that, that before he was with Death Row, he was under Jimmy. And um, Tupac got in some trouble and went to jail, as we all know. And, and I think that Tupac was definitely set up on those rape, rape charges. I don't believe for a second that he raped anybody. Um, yeah, I don't believe for a second that Tupac raped anybody. I think that was a total setup. Um, I think uh, if, you, if you look at what happened when Tupac was in jail, very interesting. He, uh, he ended up signing a deal on a, on a napkin in the jailhouse with an, with an attorney, attorney, Mr. Kenner. Mr. Kenner was representing him um, in his contract to sign with Death Row, but Mr. Kenner was also an owner of Death Row. I was a uh, licensed financial advisor for a number of years. I know all about ethics and, and uh, doing good business and doing ethical business, and that is... It, it doesn't even matter if you're a lawyer or not. Any trade, that that is the most unethical business you could ever have is to to represent both sides. Lawyer, he should have been disfired as a lawyer. Um, if Tupac ever challenged that death row contract in a court of law, it would have got thrown out. Did, Tupac would have been a free agent as soon as he walked into the court. Um, you wonder if he ever threatened because you do hear that that uh, kind of 
talk that threat that Tupac had threatened to walk and wanted his master tapes from death row. Um, that could definitely be a possibility of why he was killed. And, and especially if you look at uh, Jimmy Ivoni again, I want to get back to him because Jimmy, he also owned death row. If when you really look at it, he, he was, he was one of the biggest owners of death row through Interscope records. Uh, you know, Jimmy had moved Tupac from his own label to another label that he owned. So it makes you wonder about Jimmy Ivone. Um, when the, the biggest thing I, I, I think of is, is when Tupac's mother went to get Tupac's money. Tupac hadn't been paid like he should have been paid for all the millions of albums he sold. And uh, when, when Afini Af, Af, Shakur went to get the money, she didn't, she didn't get the money from Suge Knight and Death Row Records. No. They had no money. She went to get the money, and she sued and settled with who? She settled with Jimmy Ivone. He, he, he wrote her a big check, and uh, he's the only one who, who has written any checks to, uh, to the family of Tupac Shakur. So he was the true owner of Tupac's music. I, I'm fairly confident of that. He wrote the checks. Um, it makes you wonder what was his responsibility in all of this. Why was he so quick to settle and write a check and not not let it go to uh, all the way through the courts? Um, you you know makes you wonder about uh, Tupac's mother too. Whether she kind of knows more than she's saying, but she's kind of bound because she took the money. Um, and I don't blame her for taking the money. It's Tupac's money, and I know that uh, Tupac would have told her to take the money because that that's that's what Tupac believed in. He believed in take the money and, and do the best with that money that you can. And and I don't think it was a poor decision by her to do that. But it, it, but it makes you wonder, you know, could the record companies be involved in this? Um, it seems to me that a lot of famous people seem to die uh, and, and, and mysterious circumstances around mysterious people who seem to take over their assets. See Michael Jackson. Look into Michael Jackson's death. The people around him, the people who, who now run his estate. Um, you know, it makes you wonder because... When you sign a deal with a record company and you become famous and they owe you a lot of money, you are truly worth more dead than alive to them. And, and, and that is definitely a motive. And, and it's a motive that I don't ever see talked about on YouTube. I don't see anyone ever bringing this up. I don't ever see that Jimmy Ivone is, is listed as a top suspect with the Illuminati, with uh, the, the cops. I didn't even mention the LA cops. I mean, there's the whole Rampart scandal. And the fact is that uh, some police officers could have been involved. You know what's very interesting to me is what if a few of these things are interconnected? What if Suge Knight uh, was working along with uh, the, the record label owner? What if uh, the L.A. cops were working along? You know, there could be a lot of cooperation among some of these potential suspects. Maybe the Crips were even on, in on it. You know, when I watched the video from Las Vegas of that fist fight, the supposed fist fight, it wasn't really much of a fist fight. And it did look staged when uh, Suge Knight and Tupac and their entourage came up on Orlando Anderson at the Mike Tyson fight. That surveillance video looked totally staged. It looked like Orlando Anderson was waiting to get beat up. He, he, it didn't look like he was waiting to jump them. He, he looked very passive in it. Um, it's a very interesting video to watch. It really makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. Uh, same with Puff Daddy and that crew. That They're also suspects, you know, like the New York City clique, you know. You know, you wonder if all of these cast of characters weren't working together in some way. So, I've opened it up. I'd love to hear more people discuss Tupac, you know. I didn't even mention the big internet meme about Tupac that some people think he's still alive. Um, I don't believe that, you know. I, I think Seven Day Theory, it's very interesting. I watch the videos, I check it out. I would love to find out that uh, someday Tupac is chilling in Cuba and will come back. And that would be an amazing thing, but... Do I believe it? No, I, I think the man is dead. Um, but, you know, it's it's something that people still discuss and look into. I, I want to hear what you think. What do you think? Would, do you think the Tupac's dead? Who do you think are the most li likely suspects? Let's, let's, let's hear it from you.